Hey Leute, willkommen zurück zu Dangan Rumpel. Wir müssen immer noch den Mord aufklären an. Also von, keine Ahnung, wer gestorben ist. Das wissen wir immer noch nicht. Ich denke halt immer noch, dass die Mokoro Ikosabi oder wie auch immer die hieß. Ikosabi. Oh, really? I heard a tattoo of two other information where the victim's identity should become clear. Yeah, the tattoo is yeah. Uh. Here. I got it! Yeah. Okay. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? Mitchell represents Fenrir is... Yeah, Wolf. Toll, Wolf. Yeah, okay, toll. The representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge, world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god Loki and a female giant. Hey guys, get some Norse mythology. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. A wolf. Then that means exactly the body we found had a tattoo of a wolf, which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on, isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. What? Are you saying the mastermind is dead? No, we have to have a cool last trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. Yeah. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means... Yoko got it wrong? Um, who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time, and when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us, just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy Headmaster after all. No, the Headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future practical chatter and chit-chat as much as possible! 
fine. Uncovering the identity of the mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Muguro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then, one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Based on what we know, there can only be two suspects. Makoto and Kyoko. My god! You've narrowed it down to... Yoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. The only suspects now are me and Kyoko. Damn it, I can't let this stand. Somehow I have to clear my name. Uh, I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. What time was the body discovered not at block? I got it! The That's body must have been discovered at 9 a.m. Since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Zum Glück habe ich mir das gemerkt. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 in the dark now. Okay, go get the pickaxe and be back at here by 9 o'clock. He's right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. Nee, weil die Spiegel. I was already asleep before nighttime hit, so I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh yeah! Right around 7.30! I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. It happened between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m. and I don't have an alibi from 10 p.m. till 7:30 a.m. Okay, it looks like the game has begun. If I can't provide an alibi for that period, then I just have to prove that murder didn't happen during this time. During the time, I don't have an alibi. To do that, I have to make it clear when the body ended up in the garden. Not speed mode device. Must have given me enough in the finger now, I think. Yeah, sprinklers. We've established a time frame for the murder. 
It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Something happens in the garden at the same time every morning. Yeah, spring's okay. I'm looking for my 7:30 shooting. We've established a time frame for the murder took place somewhere between 9 o'clock. Yep. And Makoto doesn't have an alibi. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7:30. What? Come on, Makoto, don't hear me like that. Makes me think. I saw. Okay, but I how much I need to. 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 We've established a time. It took place somewhere between 9 o'clock. Yep. And Makoto just. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. We've established a time. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. What? Yep. Oh, no. Makoto. Oh. Yeah, okay. That's more than enough time. So Makoto, if you have any yeah, objections, now would be the time. <sighs> We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night. It's a pen on him. I must have to Okay, wait, stop ma. I must have to bring this down, ma'am. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock. Yeah, okay. No, it's wrong. Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7:30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7:30. Then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on! I remember this part perfectly. The body was wet, dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such indecent words? No. I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler, are you trying to deny my entire existence? This is Yeah, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler, you better tell us why! You proved that it wasn't the sprinkler that got the body wet. All I have to do is hit Toko with certain evidence, and that should do it. If you look at the body itself, that should make it clear. Ah, super, that's up. I admit nothing! I hate you! No, no, no! I don't know anything! Hold on! Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing! I hate you! No, no, no! I don't know anything! Are you trying to blame me? I admit to nothing. Are you trying to blame me? I admit to nothing. I hate you. No, no, no! I don't know anything! How can you say it wasn't the sprinkler? This should prove it. Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal... <laughs> I'm so sick of her. Yeah. Let's just move on. 
the reason only the top half was wet was because... While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it! I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you! In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. Kyoko's the only one without an alibi. Does it mean that Makoto's, Makoto's killer is? I refuse to believe it. Kyoko murdered someone down- I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me, and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why, I can't let that happen. So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now you decide to blame me? Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? Shut up, you! You got it, boss! Shutting up now! Anyway, Kyoko, you actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She did? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So, that was her motive? If she had a motive, and no alibi, well then... I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet. But that, but that doesn't, doesn't mean, mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. Ah, wo war das denn jetzt? Ja. Yeah. I got it! You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? Warum schießt du gegen mich? Was ist das? You catch on quick. You're right. All you have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. Why would Kyoko say that? Why would you want to make me look like a killer? No, I can't think about that right now. That tarp. If it was used the way Kyoko said, the tarp must have touched the body, right? I had a blue sign dran sein müssen, yeah. But the body. Wait. Something's not right. And what might that be? I can't worry about Kyoko's motivation. If I don't do something, everyone's gonna think I'm the killer. I have to refute what Kyoko said.
by covering the body with the tarp. The killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp... It was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty! Not on the body, it hadn't dried yet. Luckily, even warned us not to touch it. Okay, Vada. By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevents. So the reason that it's because the spring but the underside of it, it was totally spotless, right? Oh, it's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. No, that's wrong. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, yeah. so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh, yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? Huh? The blood was camouflage? What if? After the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim. You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office. That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. Das Huhn, oder? Ja, das eine Huhn fehlt doch. Oder hat gefehlt. I got it! Ja. Could it have been chicken blood? What? Chicken blood? Yes. When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So, you're saying, someone killed a chicken, and then covered the body with its blood? Man, that's messed up! Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful! They should have at least eaten it! I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Hmm. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree, that certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Stimmt. Hat man irgendwie draufgelegt. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they'd already covered in blood. 
This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off, at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Oh, Miss Hell, we all know I it up. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? <laughs> That's not. Hey, Kyoko, what's all in this shit? I mean, okay, they had the right to arrest him, but so to shoot him. But good, I would say, we're going to see you next time. Bye, Danganronpa, and ciao.